Hello and welcome to another Stephen Mendes video. This video is made specifically for my students of control systems who are struggling with a particular assignment problem and I want to give them a few hints and a helping hand. Their question is relating to this equation and they wish to draw a couple of graphs and I want to point them in the right direction. So let's first of all analyze what we actually have written here where B and C are constants. And of course A is just 1 since we have no coefficient in front of the S squared term. A, B and C referring to your conventional quadratic equation which you learnt as a youngster in school. Now we have made one other condition where we have said that this is an underdamped system. The significance of saying that means that we are going to end up with complex or imaginary roots of our quadratic equation in the denominator. If you bear that in mind, you will do well. The first thing we need to do is to realize that we can rewrite this equation. Study it carefully. We have replaced B with 2 zeta omega n and we have placed, replaced C with omega n squared where omega n is the natural resonant frequency and zeta is the damping ratio. The reason for these choices will become obvious in a minute, but it makes perfect sense to do this because these are the two constraining parameters of control problems written in this form. Well, what are we going to do next? The next thing we are going to do is to write out the solutions of the roots of the denominator. So what we have here is your normal quadratic solution to any quadratic equation minus b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a which has been drilled into students of mathematics from a very young age. But here we see now it begins to appear to us the reason for our choices. Look closely at this simplified form of our equation and you will see some nice things happening above. The coincidence or plan to have 2 and 4 as the coefficients all over 2 means that our constants disappear entirely. The second condition in pink that we have used omega n squared as c means that we end up with omega n squared in both sections under our square root, which makes for some very interesting simplification. Once we remove, cancel out our terms, we are left, we can bring omega outside of the square root symbol and we are left with a very simple solution of our roots which depends only on zeta and omega n. It is a magnificent way to rewrite our original expression. The next step that we're going to do is to draw an s-plane plot. Now that is the s-plane which is a slight modification of the complex plane and is used for plotting the poles and zeros of transfer functions. We have already covered the S-plane in our lectures, but if you have a difficulty with it, you are advised to look at those videos so that you may demystify the S-plane for yourself. 
The next thing we are going to do is to realize that our expression for an underdamped system can simplify this even further. Observe when zeta is less than 1, which would be true if the system is underdamped. How would we know this? Well, look at what is under the square root. If zeta is less than 1, we have a complex expression underneath that square root. So if zeta is less than 1, what is under our square root is going to be complex. So we have extracted the omega n and we have put the j operator and more importantly, we have reversed the 1 and the zeta squared. Make sure you do that. Make sure you understand why we've done that. We now have 1 minus zeta squared instead of zeta squared minus 1. Because we want a positive expression under the square root because we have already moved j outside of the square root symbol. So what we have there written now, our expression for S1 and S2, represents the most simplest form of an underdamped system when we are trying to focus on the details, which is zeta and omega n as required by the question. The next step is to plot the roots S1 and S2 onto the S plane. But before we do that, we want you to notice that the magnitude is given by Pythagoras, which is the squares added together and the square root taken of the squares. That is, we square the real part, we square the imaginary part, we add them together, we take the square root, and we end up with the magnitude. Now notice that in this case, the magnitude ends up as just omega n. Another wonderful outcome of our carefully selected mathematical choices in the earlier part of the solution. So, how does that look when it is put onto our S plane? Observe that omega n is the length of our line from the origin to each of the poles, which is the roots of the denominator as explained in previous classes. Now, we want the students to do some work. We only want to give them some hints. So this is where we are going to conclude our video. We have put an angle and we have put some question marks. The students have to relate those question marks, those points shown on the question marks, namely the points on the axis and the angle and a little circle that we have put there to our equations. We can't do everything for them. So if they write in those question marks, they will have done well. And the second part of their problem, ask them to draw another S-plane plot and show that the locus of roots, when omega n is constant, basically they want to show the variation of zeta. And they want to hold omega n at a constant value and indicate the different regions in the S-plane where the zeta is above 1, less than 1, or equal to 1. So we have helped them, but we have not done the work for them. 
Thanks for watching and we hope that you have found this video helpful. If you as an international student has enjoyed our video or has questions, please post in the comments. See you in our next video. Thanks for watching.